Dion uh, from the cast, uh, uh, Magno Vardbrek and Lola Creton, and the uh, writer director, Mia Hansen Love. When I decided to make this film, it's not as if there had been a moment when I said to myself, this is the time to make this film. It came out of many years of, uh, about a first love. It came out of many years of my experiences over 15 years of uh, love, of my studies, and of uh, life, and it just became a very strong feeling at a certain point that I should make the film, but it was a process. D'une certaine manière, j'ai l'impression d'avoir fait le film aussi pour comprendre comment j'étais devenue cinéaste. C'est pour moi une manière indirecte de, de parler de ça. In a way, I feel that I made the, mo the movie be to understand why I became a filmmaker. It was an indirect way of uh, coming to that. Uh, can you can you also talk a little bit about the the use of uh, time, the passage of time in the film, which is very striking, and uh, why this uh, period of eight years and, and how you wanted the time to be sort of a character in the story? C'est vrai que c'est un film qui se passe euh, dans lequel on voit le temps passer. Ça se passe sur sur huit ans et les, les deux autres films que j'ai fait avant aussi parlaient de ça, même si le, le deuxième était sur une période plus courte. Mais le premier se passait sur onze ans. Euh, je crois que c'est lié au fait que les, les choses qui, qui m'ont inspiré euh, ce film, comme les deux précédents, ont, ont tellement à voir avec le passage du temps, ce sont des réflexions euh, qui, qui, qui ont vraiment à voir avec, avec, avec euh, une, une forme de... Euh, des interrogations liées à ça, une forme de... Euh, de comment, comment, comment on change, ce, ce qui se transforme, ce qui, ce qui reste, euh, qu'est-ce que la maturité, qu'est-ce que... Euh, la force des sentiments, enfin les choses dont j'avais envie de parler ont à voir avec le passage du temps et je ne pouvais pas euh, traiter ce film sans, 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 sans qu'il se déroule sur toutes ces années. I think it's true that um, the film does take place over the passage of uh, time, it's eight years, and uh, I treated that subject as well in my preceding uh, films. Maybe not that the passage of time was shorter in the, in the one that I did before this one, but the first one, uh, was over the course of 11 years. And I think it's because it's important for um, the subject matter to see the passage of time in order to um, treat it correctly. And uh, for, for the actors, uh, for, for Lola and for Magna, uh, who, who, who you were working uh, with uh, Mia for the second time, uh, having been in the father of my children as well, uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit uh, from your perspective as actors about the process of working uh, with Mia as a director and what was uh, special about that collaboration for you? Uh, 
Hello? Uh, well, for me, it was uh, extraordinary to continue uh, learning to know me as I was in following my children too. And uh, this time it was even uh, more extraordinary because uh, I could work with her much, much more, much more, uh, because uh, I had more to do there. And I was very happy about that because uh, I don't know the cinema that much because I come from theater world and uh, for the first time I really saw how great cinema can be and uh, in the sense of I always love theater because I love the rehearsals, uh, I love the time we have a couple of months b before meeting the audience and all that and uh, <coughs> Sometimes with the cinema, I felt a bit like go so fast, and as an actor, you you do something and it's over before you even started. And with me, it was the total opposite. So I I was almost back in the theater theater constellation, which was was great. But each scene was really great work and great uh, new land for me. And all that um, Mia has in her and the way she's giving it to the actors is a real, real present. And um, I hope a lot of actors will, will have the possibility to, to uh, experience it. Thank you. Everything happened uh, in the moment uh, with softness and with care. <laughs> Luna is very shy. Actually, maybe I mean, you can say something about uh, how you selected uh, Lola for the role. I think some of us saw her here in the festival uh, a couple of years ago, Catherine Freyaz, uh, Bluebeard. Actually, for the first time, I, I, I chose an actress because having seen her in a film, in a way, even if, of course, I needed to meet her after and talk to her and see her being the character of my film, but uh, until there, I had always been meeting people for what they were in life, or even if some of them had been actors or actresses in films. But this time, it happened very simple, in a very simple way, is that when I started looking for the, the actress for this film, the only thing that I knew for sure was that I wanted her to be very young, to be the age of, of what she was in the start of the film. I didn't care about, uh, I didn't want an actress who would have been older and, and had would have had to play younger. I thought the most important thing for the film is that she has, is for her to have the innocence, the, the juvenilité, I don't know, juvenilité, the, 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 the juvenility yeah, of, of the youth. Of, yes, of, of, the, of the beginning. And, and I thought it would be very interesting to work on how she can play being older without having, of course her face doesn't change and she's, still the same, and of course you can say it's a, for some people I guess it can be a problem for the film, but for me I thought this is a very interesting perspe perspective on this story. And then I, just at the moment where I started looking for the actress for the film, I, 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 by accident I saw on TV, because it wasn't released in France, so I saw on TV Bluebird by Catherine Brea, and I was really impressed by her, her presence. Uh, the intensity of her presence, the fact that even if she was so young, almost still a child, 
she had a strange, I don't know, some kind of a, a charisma that was very special to me, some kind of aura, even, I would say. And then I met her, and she was as shy as she is now. <laughs> so it's not really a matter about talking about the character, I think that she would have said, it's really something about how she is, uh, her way of being on the set, her presence, and the, uh, the strength of her, on the, uh, the, her uh, cinégénie. Cinematic quality, quality for the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about the the process in writing, directing, and in acting of maturation. Uh, a lot of growing goes on between the ages of 15 to 23 in that eight-year period. How do you deal with that as a writer director? And as an actress, uh, showing those those levels of change, you don't need to see it so much in the face and body as you do in the personality in the mental growth that goes on. A uh, question for from Dia, and I guess also for Lola about uh, how they incorporated uh, the various uh, stages of change that a character goes through between the ages of fifteen and twenty-three. Not so much uh, visibly in the face, but uh, in terms of the emotions and uh, the the in inner development. Well, it was my choice from the very beginning that uh, not to try to uh, get this getting older, uh, the, not to try to show this through the changes of the body, because I not because I I mean. Because I think cinema simply cannot do that. When it does, I don't believe in that. And to me, what it shows me is not real life or truth. It shows me artifice, shows me cinema, and it, it, it makes me be feeling more far of the truth than closer. That's why this, um, the, the, the effects that I could have tried to have with like makeup or things like that, I, I chose from the very beginning not this to go into this direction and I thought it's much more interesting to try to figure this through uh, something that has to do with interiority and now I will switch to French because it gets ab too abstract en fait ça c'est pas que je me sois pas préoccupé de la question mais la manière dont j'ai essayé de travailler était vraiment liée au contenu des scènes et au rythme des scènes presque plus presque plus que à, à, à ce qu'ils disent ou comment ils le disent, mais, mais vraiment quelque chose qui a rapport avec la musicalité des scènes. Et je trouve d'ailleurs que Lola a réussi incroyablement, à, 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 à une intuition de ça de manière très forte à travers des silences, à travers euh, le tempo des scènes. It's not that I uh, didn't uh, place any importance or worry about that issue, but I felt that that would happen much more in terms of the scenes and the rhythm of the scenes and the evolution of the scenes in terms of finding that interior change, which I think that Lola did very well. Uh, yes. I love your very painterly use of color, especially the placement of objects in red and mm. white and blue, and you can imagine my surprise seeing how the actors are dressed <laughs> for the conference. Could you talk about the use of color? A question about the use of color in the film, particularly the strategic placement of objects that are colored, uh, uh, the colors of the French flag. <laughs> no. Uh, no, but it's very nice for you to say that, for me to hear that, because I do care a lot about colors. I do, yeah, to me it has a very strong effect or meaning, not in the sense of a metaphor, anything, not, not at all, but in a more, um, Essentially, just like painter, I feel that I, I personally, colors have a very strong effect on me and how a scene looks like or atmosphere on a scene of a scene. And um, Eric Romer said that for him, every every film, every film had a color, specific color. And to me, the color of this film is the red, obviously, and that's why at the end she has a red. Suit, uh, bathing suit, bathing suit, suit, and 
I like working on the, when she's in Denmark, she had a red t-shirt and the sky was very blue and I, I love this contrast and I worked on things like that in the film. I'm uh, very taken with the concentration of your lead actor, Lola, and I wondered how you created the, the kind of intimate set where she was able to keep this kind of presence on the, in, in the frame of such concentration. It was quite remarkable. How did you set that up? But the question is about how Mia uh, created an intimacy on the set that allowed uh, Lola to uh, maintain such uh, presence and concentration in her character in the scenes. I think that it doesn't, of course, it doesn't come only from me. I think it's something Lola has in her. And I think the, op the other actor, Sebastian, too, and, and Magni, too, I think, I think. Is they are actors who live pretty much in themselves, who, in their, who have their own world, who have, who have some kind of strong interiority, and I, that's also why I chose to work with them. That's what uh, attracted me to them, I think. So I think um, this kind of concent concentration you talk about, which is difficult to define, it's something we have in common, and. Uh, that's the, that's, I mean, when I'm on the set, I, I'm extremely, of course, I mean, to me, it's obvious everyone should, I think that's, that's the only way, or at least for me, it's the only way to work, and I'm con extremely concentrated, and I think Lola also is, and I think that's how, that's how it goes. Yeah. We make a lot of takes, I must say, not all the time. Uh, I mean, some scenes in the countryside the, uh, that had, a lot to do with the weather and very short scenes. That's for this kind of scenes we were rather waiting for hours and then doing very few uh, shots because of the weather, waiting for the right moment where the sun comes out. Uh, and in the scenes when they are uh, in uh, this, this amount of routine, even more intimacy. Yes, this we, we weren't doing that much, that many shots. But in general, we are. We are really working on the site. I mean, it's really like it's not only like as if everything would have been done before, and then we just no. It's a real. It's a. It's a real. We, I, I feel we are really progressing during the, the shots. Um, I find it interesting that this film did not go into exposition. It did not tell you what's going to happen or what 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 happened. It permitted you to be in the moment. And because it was not expository, I thought it was for every woman or every man, the first love of every girl, and perhaps the first love of every boy. And I find her name, Camille, was related to Camille, uh, constantly in dolor, you know, in sadness and grief and grieving. I didn't know whether that was an accident or, or deliberate, but I, I just found the, uh, the lack of before of what's going to be uh, going on, or what has happened, or where they're going, or why they're going. I, I found that uh, intriguing. Yeah, this uh, viewer appreciates uh, the, the lack of uh, exposition in the film and says that that gives it a kind of universal quality. And that uh, could, uh, could Mia comment on that? And also whether or not, <laughs> whether or not she named the character Camille in any way related to the Greta Garbo movie. Non, j'ai pas pensé à ça honnêtement quand j'ai appelé le personnage comme ça. Mais, mais par contre, ce que, ce qui m'a, ce qui, une des raisons pour laquelle j'ai choisi ce, ce prénom, c'est que, enfin, en français, en tout cas, c'est un prénom qui peut être à la fois un prénom de fille, un prénom de garçon. Truthfully, I, I really didn't think about that when I named her that, that the Greta Garbo. Uh, but I picked it in part because it, it is a name that in French um, is neutral. It can go for uh, a boy or a girl. Quant à l'autre à l'autre partie de ce dont vous avez parlé sur le, le fait que le film n'annonce euh, pas ce qui va se passer ou qu'il n'y a pas d'effet d'annonce etc c'est une chose à laquelle je suis très attentive quand je quand j'écris pour, pour moi ça a vraiment rapport avec euh, c'est évidemment subjectif mais avec une recherche de vérité dans la vie on ne sait pas ce qui va se passer les choses ne sont pas inscrites l'avenir n'est pas inscrit de manière euh, visible dans, dans le présent et, je, et ce que j'essaie de faire quand j'écris c'est d'être constamment dans le présent d'autant plus d'une certaine manière que ce sont des films qui parlent du passage du temps c'est d'autant plus important pour moi que chaque scène soit 
soit complètement au présent et pas dans l'anticipation. Ok, en termes de la seconde partie de la question, qui a à voir avec le lack de l'expositaire nature du film, Um, I'm very, very aware of that when I write, uh, because especially since I'm dealing with the passage of time, because as in real life, you don't necessarily know what's going to happen, so I try to keep it as close to that as possible. Si je vois qu'une chose est dite, si j'ai l'impression qu'une chose a été dite pour faire comprendre quelque chose, je vais plutôt avoir tendance à, à, à l'enlever. J'ai l'impression qu'on apprend trop dans, dans les, les écoles de scénario à dire il faut, il faut que tout soit expliqué, il faut que tout, enfin que tout est très didactique, on doit avoir des intentions, alors que pour moi c'est l'inverse. Quand j'écris, j'essaye au contraire que les, les intentions soient invisibles et que, et que, et que rien, ne, que rien ne soit dit parce qu'il faut le dire pour faire passer une information. And in fact, when I reread uh, a draft of my script, if I see a line which is, it seems to me to be an indicator of something that's going to happen later, I strike it. Um, I think there's too much emphasis that's put on, um, you know, sort of letting you know or giving you a hint of intentions that are going to happen in the future in um, schools where you learn how to do um, uh, script writing. And so I'm very, very aware of that, and I try to eliminate it rather than to uh, underscore it. I would just like to add a little thing with that, because when I saw the film, I, I thought it was so, so nice, just to s the way she had, um, uh, she, she's telling how the parents of Camille is uh, suddenly separated. Uh, I also uh, think the use of seasons was important in this film. I mean, if there was the only thing that gave you any sense of there was going to be the shift with the seasons, and I would like you to talk about your decision to use certain seasons at certain points in telling the story and advancing it. A question about the choice to set certain scenes during particular seasons of the year. Well, c'est vrai que dans ce film, c'était ça me paraissait très important de pouvoir avoir plusieurs saisons. C'était un peu mon presque mon seul outil pour vraiment figurer le passage du temps. Euh, donc on a tourné deux mois en été et un mois en hiver, mais je dois dire j'ai trouvé ça très, très dur comme manière de ne pas dire que je ne le referais pas parce que si ça s'impose, il faut le faire, mais le, le fait de couper le tournage en deux, euh, d'arrêter de, le tourner pour monter puis de reprendre un mois d'hiver, euh, j'avais jamais travaillé comme ça et je trouve que c'est très compliqué de, de couper en deux un, un tournage comme ça, même si au final je trouve que c'est très bénéfique pour le film, d'autant plus qu'on a tourné euh, cet hiver à Paris, pile dans la période où il, il neigeait beaucoup, ce qui, est très, ce, qui, ce qui est très rare pour Paris, et donc on a eu la chance de pouvoir avoir des plans euh, comme ça sous la neige. Quoi. Yeah, well, it's true that I felt that it was very important, and it was almost my only tool to um, show the passage of time, to have it play and have different seasons. So we shot uh, two summers and one winter. One summer. <coughs> Sorry. One, one summer and one winter. Once, sorry, two months, two months in the summer. Oh, two months in the summer and one month in the winter. Um, I don't know if I would do it again. Um, I found it very tough to cut the um, shooting in half. Um, and there's some things that happen. For instance, when we were filming the winter, I mean, it was snowing a lot in Paris, and that's very rare for Paris. So it was important, but I found it very, very difficult. For instance, when we were shooting in the school, we had three days. And they, they were very small scenes, but they were supposed to happen in, in many different moments of the film. So we, we were not supposed to be only in winter, but of course we could shoot them only in the winter. And it was snowing all the time. So we, at one moment, we, we just didn't know what to do and what to film. That's how I, I got to film the, the, when the scene when they are, it's very short in the film, it's during a letter, but when they are in the, uh, dans la cour, the court, in the court, in the courtyard, and they are, uh, uh, um, making snowballs and, and playing that just because we have nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, we're just about out of time, but I want to ask one question of uh, David at the end of the panel there, just for people who don't know. Uh, he is uh, one of, if not the most uh, ambitious uh, producers at work uh, right now in the, in the French uh, film industry, and we had many films uh, produced uh, by his company uh, earlier this year in our uh, series on uh, Serge Bozon and uh, another uh, interesting group of young French directors. And I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, David, if you can talk a little bit about uh, what uh, 
what drew you to working with Mia and also the, a little bit about Les Films Peleas and the kinds of projects that you're interested in uh, supporting as a producer. Thank you. Uh, may I answer in French? By all means. Okay. Um, alors, en, en ce qui concerne la rencontre avec Mia, ça s'est passé dans des circonstances un peu inhabituelles puisque c'était après la mort d'Albert Balzan qui était un des très très grands producteurs indépendants en France. In terms of my meeting with Mia, it happened under unusual circumstances because it happened right after the death of um, Albert Balzan, who was one of the greatest producers in France. Et, et c'est le producteur d'ailleurs qui a inspiré le film que peut-être certains d'entre vous ont vu, qui est le père de mes enfants, qui était le précédent film de Mia. And he is what inspired the um, preceding film of Mia's, which is uh, the father of my children. Et, et c'est lui qui devait produire à l'origine le premier film qu'elle a, qu a fait, qui est Tout est pardonné. And he was the one who was supposed to uh, produce her first film, Everything is Forgiven. Et, et donc c'est dans ces circonstances un peu, un peu particulières que, que nous nous sommes rencontrés à, à travers la productrice, euh, coproductrice autrichienne qui devait coproduire ce film. Et, et donc c'est elle la première fois qui m'a parlé de, de Mia. So it's under these unusual circumstances that we met. We met through the co-producer, who is Austrian, of the film, and that's when I met Mia. And so, what struck me the first time, I read this project that was going to be called "Tout est pardonné." And not only was it the quality of the writing, the cinematography, that is, the things that we feel when we read the script of a scenario, and after the meeting, it was really the maturity that we had to face. Alors qu'elle était vraiment très très jeune. Elle est toujours, mais à l'époque, elle était très très jeune puisque c'était en 2005. 2005, je crois 2005. Okay. Well, what, what struck me first of all was um, the uh, beauty of, uh, of the writing, and um, and then of course was upon meeting her, and she was very young at the time. She's still young, but she was very young. It was in 2005. Um, Her, the, her maturity. And so it's on this basis that we developed a collaboration il y a une habitude qui est d'essayer de produire des premiers films. Donc on produit, c'est vrai, beaucoup, beaucoup de premiers films. Ok, so it's on that basis that we established a collaboration and then we went on to produce the two ensuing films. And in terms of the role of Peleas and my role with them, I mean, it is true that what we try to do there is we're interested in producing first quality films of new writers and directors. Et, et en France, il y a cette, cette spécificité qui est que c'est un pays qui produit quand même beaucoup, beaucoup de films, puisque chaque année sortent sur les écrans français près de 220 films, ce qui est beaucoup. Enfin, je sais bien que les États-Unis, c'est dans des conditions bien supérieures, mais pour un pays de la taille de la France, c'est vraiment beaucoup, surtout si on compare par rapport à d'autres pays européens comme l'Angleterre, comme l'Italie ou comme l'Allemagne. Well, it's true that, I mean, in France, Uh, produces an enormous amount of uh, films. Uh, I know it's not the same, you know, on the same caliber as here, but for a country of that size, 220 films a year is a great deal, especially when you compare it to Germany or Italy or some of the other European countries. Et, et sur ces 220 films, vous devez avoir à peu près une soixantaine de premiers films. Donc c'est vrai qu'il y a une attention particulière qui est portée aux premiers films en France, à la fois de la part des producteurs, mais aussi des, des partenaires financiers. Euh, And in terms of those 220 films, uh, about uh, 60 of them are first films. And it's true that the producers uh, in France uh, pay particular attention to those uh, first films. Et sinon, en ce qui concerne un peu le, le travail plus spécifique qu'on fait à, au film Péléas, j'ai l'impression que ce qui compte euh, énormément, c'est avant tout la rencontre avec un, avec un auteur, avec un cinéaste. Euh, quelle que soit je dirais, sa, sa sensibilité, quelle que soit un peu l'histoire qu'il ou elle veut raconter, quelle que soit la façon, les moyens qui sont mis au service de, de cette histoire, mais avant tout, au départ, c'est la, la rencontre et la foi dans le, dans le talent de la personne, et c'est peut-être une chose qui peut nous, nous distinguer, même si on n'est absolument pas les seuls à, 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 
travailler comme ça, mais qui nous distingue des producteurs de, qui, qui partent avant tout du, du scénario, du, du projet, du, du script. Du, voilà. And I think in terms of Pelias, which maybe distinguishes us from other producers, is that we place enormous importance on um, the meeting, the first meetings and the meetings with um, the, the writer and uh, the filmmaker and that rapport and in terms of their sensibility, in terms of their direction, um, and which is a little bit different than the emphasis than um, some other uh, production companies uh, place, which is maybe more geared towards uh, just looking at the script uh, void of the um, filmmaker, director, or writer. Je conclurai en disant que c'est pour ça qu'on travaille avec des des, des auteurs disons, dans une famille qui est celle de, de, très largement du cinéma d'art et scène, euh, mais avec des auteurs de sensibilité vraiment euh, voilà, divers et variés. Et, et c'est vrai qu'en ce moment, on, on voit bien chez une tendance un peu de fond qui est que certains producteurs d'un coup se spécialisent un petit peu dans des, dans des genres de films. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a beaucoup de producteurs qui cherchent à faire des comédies à tout prix, parce que la comédie est un genre qui plaît ou qui se spécialisent sur des films de genre, que ce soit du film, un film de thriller, des films d'action, un film policier, parce qu'ils sentent qu'il y a une possibilité de financement plus, plus, plus sûre. Ok, et c'est vrai que, vous savez, en ce moment, il y a une tendance, nous avons remarqué qu'il y a une tendance sur les producteurs de se focaliser sur un genre, comme par exemple, certains sont très attractifs à la comédie parce que les gens aiment la comédie, and it's more financially viable, or they'll go for thrillers and, and whatnot, and we tend to go for something a little bit different uh, of the ilk of what you saw here. Uh, David and Magna Obad and Lola and Nia, thank you so much uh, for uh, being here.